over decades ago in 2008, fossil mother and baby were excavated from Aletia, a 9,000 years old pre-pottery Neolithic village, which has been submerged off the coast of Haifa, Israel for thousands of years. This finding led to become a breakthrough in understanding one of the biggest dead cows in the world. Later on that year, an international collaborative team led by Dr. Helen Donegu and Dr. Mark Spiegelman from UCL Center of Infectious Disease and International Health conducted detailed analysis of the boards using scientific technique that revealed DNA and cell walls lipid from mycobacterium tuberculosis, the principal agent of human tuberculosis. The DNA was sufficiently well preserved for molecular typing to be carried out and the analysis of the bacterial cell walls lipid by HPLC provided direct evidence of tuberculosis. Dr. Donegu said, what is fascinating is that the infecting organism is definitely the human strain of tuberculosis, in contrast to the original theory that human TB evolved from bovine TB after animal domestication. This gives us the best evidence yet that in a community with domesticated animals but before derging, the infecting strain was actually the human pathogen. The presence of large number of animal bones shows that animals were an important food source, and this probably led to increase the human population that help TB to be maintained and spread. The terms of tuberculosis itself, first ever created by Johann Sonlein in 1834, this disease is also called as the captain of all these men of death. Sounds cool and creepy at the same time, right? Today, TB is still one of the biggest infectious killers with an estimated 1 billion deaths in the last 200 years. This number is more than malaria, plague, smallpox, influenza, HIV, and cholera combined. WHO stated in 2018 alone, a total of 1.5 million people died from TB, including more than 200,000 people with HIV. But what exactly is the disease and how has this pathogen persisted for so long? Typically, TB are caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. This mycobacterium is airborne and it can travel into our airways and infect our lungs. This airborne transmission can occur when infected people cough, sneeze, or spit and propel the TB germ into the air. When TB bacteria infecting our lungs, immune cell or macrophage attempting to engulf and break down bacterial invaders. In many cases, this response is enough to remove bacteria, but in individuals with impaired medical conditions ranging from malnutrition, HIV, diabetes, and pregnancy, the immune response may not be strong enough to destroy the intruders. If that happens, MTB will reproduce inside those macrophages. As they infect more cells, the bacteria secretes cell degrading enzymes that destroy the infected tissue in lungs, triggering chest pain, blood cough, and damage to the lung leads to oxygen deprivation. This begins a plot of hormonal changes that can affect homeostasis, including decrease in appetite and iron production. From this point, MTB can spread to musculoskeletal system, causing big pain, to the kidney and intestine, causing abdominal pain, and to the brain, causing headache and in some cases even impaired consciousness. Scientific and medical development from the past has been working pretty much perfecting TB. Probably one of the biggest achievements is in 1921 when scientists developed the BCG vaccine to battle TB. This development laid the groundwork for the modern field of antibiotic, but antibiotic failed to address a major diagnostic complication. About in 10 people that affected with MTB, 9 of them don't show any symptoms. In this lactant infection, the MTB may be dormant and only activating when someone's immune system is too weak to defend. So, what are the obstacles to get rid of this disease? The public health challenge of TB has been managed by a number of drug and treatment strategies over the years. But this challenge has always been much bigger in certain parts of the world. There are four categories of the challenge. First, the major challenge are the spreading of the HIV infection that increasing the activity of dormant TBC and so has been the increasing the resistance of MTB strain to the high efficacy first line anti TB drugs especially for the forced horsemen of drug, which lead to the growing incidence of drug-resistant strains, multiple drug-resistant and extensively drug-resistant. These strains pose a significant threat, especially for the patient with a lack of immune performance. Second challenge that may contribute in disease progression include the poverty, population expansion, active transmission in overcrowded places like hospital, prison, and other public places, and the migration of the individual from high-incidence countries. Third challenges are the technical problems like poor quality of detection, 
in addition to health status like old age, malnutrition, and immune related problems. Finally, the fourth, the fourth challenge are the expensive, long term therapy, drug related problems form additional challenge for an effective TB management. In regard of that challenge, we will think quick to prevent its outbreak. So, how to prevent TBC? According to WHO, there are two categories, primary and secondary prevention. Primary aims to block the infection like the making of infection control strategies. First, infection control plan, such as involve patient and community in advocacy campaign to educate the mob about TB and their possible outbreak. The health worker must explain the detail of TBC to educate community so the incidence can be reduced. Second, safe putun collection, so the infection rate can be decreased earlier, thus making the prevention of to be effective. Third, cog etiquette and cog hygiene. This person implement the health etiquette, so everyone around him doesn't have a potential to have a TB. For triage TB suspect to fast track or separation, the person who has a TB must be placed separately depend on their severity of the TB infection. Fifth, rapid TB diagnosis and treatment. The health worker must be responsive to the patient who have a symptom of TB, such as intensive counseling if the patient said that he had a chronic crowd, and etc. Sit and the last, improve room air ventilation. This is the importance of the TB prevention. Physical house condition is one of the important factors of TB expansion. So, it's recommended to improve their air ventilation thus the TB can spread easily. Second type of prevention is secondary which aim to block the progression of TB to be an active disease. There are three kinds of secondary prevention. First, the bacillus calmet guarin or BCG vaccine that already cured over 40,000 children around the world. Second, is only as a preventive therapy or IPT which accompanied to it other drug, but this therapy need a prior positive tuberculin test result. And third, antiretroviral therapy or ART for people with HIV to restore the immune function which is important to prevent TB to its active form. We know that TBC is one of the famous respiratory killer disease that took over 1 billion victims over 200 years. So many scientists also struggle to get rid of this disease because too many challenges face them from the anatomy of the bacteria itself, social factor, economic factor, and the opportunity combined with HIV that increase the probability of the TBC itself. Despite of this challenge, we can take small step to support the authority by following the instruction of prevention, prevention system, primary and secondary, so we can live with our anxiety of TB outbreak.